It is June 11th, 2022. Uh, this is the future. Oh, I haven't done this. It is it's, the future of photography. It's the future of photography. Here we go. Damn it. <laughs> the future of photography. <laughs> See, I, I haven't recorded for, I don't even know, a couple of weeks at least. So We got your back. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're back. It's the future of photography. Episode 225, the Helsinki bus station theory what is that all about uh, how are you guys doing oh uh, very well thank you yeah it's uh you know, it's getting towards midsummer here isn't it so um you know it's 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 that short period of time in the uk where the weather's quite pleasing absolutely it's uh it's been it's been nice and sunny and a bit too dry here but hey i'll take it sounds like california every day <laughs> Hmm. All right, well, um, Adrian, you brought us on too dry. emphasis on too dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you brought us the Helsinki bus station theory. Um, when have. was the last time you were in Helsinki? Do you know I've never been to Finland? <laughs> Ooh, <neither>. Actually, <laughs> I think the closest I I've got to fin time. closest I've got to Helsinki is probably Tallinn, where I went once for a weekend, which is a very nice city, but completely different country, of course. Right. I'm sure they have a gorgeous bus station because Helsinki is a wonderful town and uh, considered one, uh, Finland's considered one of the top countries for uh, overall happiness and satisfaction. Um, mm -hmm. It's an interesting place. I used to consult to Nokia, so uh, I would spend ah. some time there in the winter. <laughs> Okay, that'll be a bit different from California weather then. <laughs> a little bit. You start drinking at two. <laughs> That's pretty well out. Uh, but yeah, very well-educated, finely and broadly educated population. Very literate, amazing. And um, I, I, I loved it. So I'm sure that this is going to be extraordinarily impactful. Yeah, well, uh, how do I follow up with that? The, 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 let, let's see if I can make the reality of today's story then you know, as, as good as the hype that you've just given it. So this is something that I came across uh, a week or so ago uh, in sort of general reading for life, education, self-improvement, that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, it happened to be a, a story that really resonated with me as a photographer and actually references photography as well, uh, as well as the bus station in Helsinki. So the story goes that, uh, and there's a link in the show notes, by the way. Uh, so the story goes that in 2004, uh, a Finnish American photographer called Arno Minkinen uh, did a graduation speech at a university. Uh, and he suggested that if you, as a photographer, understand the workings of Helsinki bus station, that would change your life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Ready. Yeah. Okay. Change our lives. Well, change but our lives. for the better? Uh, or... <laughs> yes, for, yes, for the, be for the better. I think it's, okay. it is, uh, as, as you might expect, it's a bit of a metaphor. Um, now, as it turns out, uh, Helsinki bus station is quite large, as you might expect for a capital city. Uh, but the the buses tend to follow pretty much exactly the same route for the first kilometre or two or three of the journey. And they branch out after that. Now, here's where we get into the metaphor, because, you know, if you've been a photographer for a, a couple of years, one year, two years, three years, however long it might be, um, you might think, OK, well, I've, I, you know, I've learned a bit about photography. I've made a body of work and you might choose to, to take that to somebody, uh, somebody who in the world of photography and art and say, hi, have a look at my photos. And they might say, ah, yes, yes, that, that looks very much like the early work of, uh, of a famous photographer <laughs> um, or, or this famous photographer or that other famous photographer. Uh, happened, and happened to the best of us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because of course, especially when you're starting out, you know, um, your influences will um, will be very clear in the photos that you make. Right now. And this is the point of the story. You're like, you're, it's like you're on a bus from Helsinki bus station. For the first part of your journey as a photographer, uh, you will probably be making work that is uh, heavily influenced, possibly even somewhat derivative. And uh, you might be following the same bus routes as other famous photographers that you are uh, enjoying the work of now the trick is and this is a short story 
Because he just says, right, the secret to all of this uh, from Arno Minkinen is just stay on the bus. Because the longer you stay on the bus, the, long, the, the further it will go. It will start to diverge its route from other buses and it will start to go somewhere interesting and possibly uh, a, a little bit different and maybe even original or unique. And the this is where the metaphor comes, you see, because as photographers, uh, the the message of staying on the bus is keep keep plugging away at it. You know, you you will be uh, you will be a lot like other photographers maybe early in your journey, and you've got to keep pushing and keep finding yourself. And that's the that's the story. That's the metaphor for the Helsinki bus station, and the lesson to be learned for all of us is just keep going. You know, stay on the bus, keep working at your photography and then something original and something that is actually about you will happen at some point in time is this like saying the old um or it's basically the answer to the old question excuse me sir how do i get to carnegie hall practice <laughs> practice <laughs> practice i mean if you if you really simplify this uh this um, metaphor then yeah i guess that's it don't don't give up that's but, right. uh, but, it, but also don't, don't 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 let the let the, the let the others kind of um, convince you that what you're doing is not special or not unique. Haters gotta hate. <laughs> oh, there, there is that definitely, but I think yeah, it's a po I think this is a positive story, right? So the three of us obviously have you know very different experiences and very different journeys in the world of photography. Um, uh, I have the absolute luxury of it of it being just a hobby that i can you know i can dabble i can dip in here i can dip in there but ultimately i don't have the the, the, the upside of that is i can do whatever i like whenever i like the, the downside of that is that maybe i'm not pushing as hard as i could do um, and uh you know the thing is is that the the story says uh you know it's very tempting to get off the bus at the point that uh, you you find your, that you're being a bit derivative or a bit too heavily influenced by others. Uh, yeah, the, the metaphor is you, you jump off the bus in disappointment. You get a cab back to the bus station and go on another bus. But of course, that follows exactly the same route because all the buses follow the same route out of the bus station. So, yeah, the, the thing is, yeah, the, the trick to, to it is to stay on the bus and, and actually go somewhere yeah, that, that's different rather than traveling the same old loops over and over and over again. Yeah. Can you make can you make a, 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 a direct kind of linkage between using photography or any any number of creative practices as a practice? In, in other words, those who are into meditation, you know, it's the simplicity and and. Um, focus even though you're apparently doing the same thing or lack of the same thing um it brings you to a deeper level of understanding and i i, I do think that if you look at your photography or one's photography as a practice practice of of experiencing the world of seeing the world of looking for something different and just staying in that practice that you'll see your world open up and then it's a question of balancing your intention with how much technique you want to absorb and develop or or not, because there's incredible work that's done with very limited technique, but a very specific way of seeing. And then there's the opposite, which is something that is highly technical and mathematical and really uh, robust in terms of the intellectual application of a practice. But... Uh, doesn't have that much to say at the end of the day. Obviously, we, we try to achieve a synthesis of both, you know, where our practice and our technique uh, kind of come together. And it doesn't come together in every single picture. But when, when it does, that sets a bar for you. And you can just continually to deepen and and, and understand the world and understand yourself and how you see. And when you just go for a walk with a camera and go, today I'm just going to look at the macro or I'm going to look at the sky or I'm going to look at the pavement or I'm going to look at people. It just, it's, you could follow the same route day in, day out. Um, I mean, when we I mean, were locked I'm, down and, you know. I'm, I'm kind but, of very happy that photography is such a, such a, really broad field of so many mm. disciplines and so many things because i do get bored easily so 
Um, if it wasn't for photography having so much to offer for, I mean, this is, this is a very technical component. There's a very creative component. There are all the different facets that you can approach that uh, and angles that you can approach that from. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons that's keeping photography interesting for me way beyond anything else. And it's, it's been, I've, I've had my, I've had my times where I, I was like, I don't think that's interesting. And then I've opened a door into this, uh, f uh, into this uh, before not known area, and it opens up an entire new building. You know, and yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's I, I find that amazing about photography. Yeah, I mean, we've talked often about you know just acquiring a different lens, which just opens up a completely different world for you. Um, along the same paths or a different camera or a different way of processing or color, black and white and whatever. Maybe the reason is because we call it photography and and um, we should probably call it 50 different things because they <laughs> are, you know. Oh, maybe it's a creative practice. Okay. Yeah, I like the idea. I like the idea of, of it as a practice. And I think that, yeah, Jeremiah, I think that speaks to the the metaphor in in the story here about the bus station because you know i i guess you one could argue perhaps that you know treating photography as a practice and continue yeah, and, and and letting that build slowly over time it is is analogous to to staying on the bus um and i think that's that there's so i think there's definitely something there i think but I, i'm i'm also with with chris in in the experimentation thing because i've been i've been thinking about this i read this and i thought well okay well what does this mean for my own photographic journey uh and and there, there's i i feel like having been now a keen photographer for possibly about 14 years i think so so not as long as perhaps some other people or some some of our listeners but but you know it wasn't yesterday i first picked up a camera either um I, it's only now in the last year or so that i feel that i'm developing not developing my own style as such but that i'm I, i'm starting to feel internally in tune with the kind of images i like to take and make you know, uh, I've done all sorts of things over the, those 14 years and had loads and loads of fun doing them. And some of them have stuck with me and some of them I've tried once or twice and then thought, ah, that's not really my thing. Um, but it's only fairly recently that I have started to feel that I've got a feel for perhaps the f kind of photographs I most like to make. And a, and a, and a particular style that I, I most lean towards. And I can... It comes to me, yeah. Looking back through the archives to some early stuff, you know, things like, uh, you know, early iPhone photography, for example. That was an interesting one. My first ever, if, and even before iPhones as well, actually. Although it, I was doing slightly less sort of artistic stuff then. I remember before, yeah, for those of uh, people who don't remember before iPhones, before Apple made cameras with uh, on their phones, um, Sony was the leading brand for camera phones. Um, and, yeah, you used to have, used to buy Sony phones because they had good cameras. But it's, uh, it, yeah, so it, I think for me, I think I fi finally after 14 years, I've probably cycled back to that bus station several times. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, Adrian, that, that you chose this uh you know, this week as a subject, because something extraordinary kind of fell into my lap, which was, you know, really directly connected to this subject. Um, I was contacted by a printmaking studio called Open Studio. And uh, it, it's a place where um, I really first came into my own experience of uh, printmaking as etching and lithography and experimental work with photography as I've always been interested in the kind of the blending of new and old technologies whether it's kind of you know digital into the real world or you know as digital you know creation and then manifest in a kind of real world sculpture or traditional um, photography printed extraordinarily you know anyway the the fusion of traditional and and uh, new medium 
And and what Phil they contacted me and said we are re-archiving all our um, our collection and uh, we just wanted to send you work um, that you made you know in the <laughs> mid 70s 1974 1973 okay wow you know at the, really at the dawn of my my work uh, as an artist and. So they sent me some images, um, you know, just to, yes, 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 yes. I was, I, I put two images up on Instagram yesterday. One made in 1974, which is a stud, uh, etching that was a fusion of, of a photographic plate on a traditional etching uh, medium and bathed in acid and then hand printed um, on gravure paper, etc., and work that I had done this year, a rock study. <laughs> so um, 48 years later. <laughs> and there is a direct link. You, you can see the images. Wow, it's it's the last two. I have no idea how to put it up on our, on our site. I missed that lesson. <laughs> so it, it's, but, that's, a, that's a fascinating thing because I... I, I just to, to reciprocate some of the stuff that I mean I mentioned early iPhone photos. There's a couple of collections, uh, small small bodies of work, maybe sort of twenty thirty images each that I made over ten years ago, um, uh, which is almost the length of my photography career or ex experience. Um, and uh, I can definitely see links in the stuff I'm doing right now back to, to that time. But I've also done lots and lots of other stuff uh, along the way. And, you know, and so uh, it's, um, I think there is definitely some, you know, this element of, uh, of practice, you know, photography as a practice of just doing it, could keep going, keep going, keep going, perhaps even when you're less inspired uh, and, uh, and then bring something through. But Chris, I, I, I have a question for you, if I may, because I know sure. that yeah, you, you have uh, 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 fingers in a lot of photography pies, right? You, there's all sorts of photography that you enjoy and that you, you've worked with. Um, I also know that there are, you know, there are some sweet spots for you, like your love of tilt shift lenses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's your take on this whole metaphor of staying on the bus? I mean, it, 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 I... I keep telling students that same thing, just not using that metaphor. But I've often referred to um, to this uh, video. Um, well, it's not a video by Ira Glass, but it's someone who took uh, uh, two minutes out of an interview with Ira Glass, uh, where he talks about the creative process. And uh, there's there's this. Um, let me bring it up here. There's this beautiful kinetic. Uh, text on the screen um, oh, while, he, nice. while he talks about it and it's two minutes about exactly well virtually exactly the same thing where it's like okay you start off you are you do have good taste everyone has good taste but uh, what you produce is not uh, not up, up to that standard and uh, that's because you're a beginner and uh, out of many many people just fall off that horse because they cannot get to that level of quality that they want and that they see everywhere and they know that that, that is good and um and that's pretty much what he tells people stay on that horse keep going stay on that train because um you will take it will take time it will be painful at times it will require you to do lots and lots and lots and lots of work to become really good and at one point you will notice that having stayed on that train is has pretty much done it and um the, the 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 creativity or the talent itself is not enough you need to put the work in and you need to do yeah. things I, over I, and I over think again also attaching to an end result is where people most go off the rails because if the reason you're doing it is because you really want a lot of likes appreciation commercial success social yeah. success uh, advertising success, then you're not doing it as a practice, you're doing it as a means to an end. And I think that when you kind of go in a much more interior way and do it as a practice without attaching to a specific outcome, except an exploration of the well, world as 
you know it, I think that yields better results. If, if that outcome is a goal in the form of, let's say, an exhibition or something, then that is, I think, perfectly fine. I use that. Yeah, but an exhibition I use is that as just a, an expression, right? Yeah, that, that workshop that I, that I held last week is, uh, I use that carrot on a stick pretty well because um, we have pro project groups that form themselves. They choose their own photography project. They have five days to work on things and and. Uh, and and really hone in on things and there are they're on all different levels from the very beginners to people who've been doing this for 20 30 years and uh and then the last day the friday night that's where we do a big kind of an exhibition presentation and uh there's every group has like five to ten minutes to show off their work and they typically do that on a big screen in form of a video or something or some make a proper exhibition like they print photos they put them up on a wall and and uh, most of them are not used to that but uh, but that goal having that be a, a goal to shoot for and and putting a little bit of i'd say competition and pressure on this way is is wonderful for people because they have that driving force it's always in their neck but in a good way because they know that they will end up um, yeah. enjoying no, I, the process. I, I, would, you know? I would argue that, a, that an exhibition is, is different. It's really just another form of communication with the community, uh, an outreach, is, yeah. you know, a way of, I think the writer Celine said, uh, you know, just a great shout out to the universe, the reaffirming the fact that you are alive, I paraphrase. But, yeah. but that, that's part of the human condition to achieve some kind of significance uh, you know and every human on earth feels that you know that the world evolves around them to a certain extent which is true they have they see the world and they they don't want to feel invisible and so it by doing that you reaffirm the fact that you are there you're present and your presence is recognized by a community and it so, helps you be maybe um well better. being visible helps you being noticed helps you being well, it gives others the, the opportunity to be interested and get in contact. And this yeah. is a yes, self-propelling kind of thing. I think, yeah. yeah, community is essential, I think, in the world of creativity. Personally, I think if you just bury yourself in the basement, do your work for 50 years, and uh, and pass away and all the stuff gets trashed. I Vivian mean, Meyer. I think, Vivian Meyer. Well, yeah, th Good there example. Are many. There's... There's many um, artists, painters, etc., who've been discovered and have become very, very well known. Vivian being one um, of their work after the fact, but was there was that their intention? I'm not sure. It may have been probably that, not. That probably not. Um, but by the way, I just posted that early etching on our Discord. Mm, yeah, sorry. Right. Okay, so. yeah, looks, looks good. Um, so th this the actually this stuff about sort of uh, you know, getting out there in community and stuff is is a good segue, um, and it's it's the other part of the story that I'm bringing today. Uh, it's, which is uh, in itself and is a continuation. So uh, we talked a couple of weeks back uh, about my zine in the making. Yay! I have on the floor in front of me a box full of them, right? And they're here. Look, I'll show it. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll even li listen, listen to this scene. <laughs> there you go. Hold it in the camera. Hold it. Hold it in front of the camera. camera. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, oh, he's a publisher oh, now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, self self published, of course. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't so matter. This is bit, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. So this is this has been a a, a, a good thing for me, and um, I'm I'm pleased to have done this. Um, I'm I'm really loving the prints actually. Uh, the the, Let me the, the bring this up on the screen come out, here. Come out nicely. Yeah, please do, please do. Look I know that. I was a bit reticent to share. Finally, we get to see something here. Yeah, but it's a bit of a work in progress last time. So this is yeah, this is this is my thing. You know, I've I've made a thing. This is my thing. I'm hoping it's it's the first of of multiple things. Um and it was a great exercise to for for me. Um I really enjoyed it. Um and it's like all of, many of these things when you actually get down to it, um it wasn't hard. Um, you know, the, 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 the act of putting it together, thinking through the images even flowed a bit uh, because I was trying to set my mind so that I didn't get stuck on making things perfect. I just wanted to get it done and, and get something done. So this is, you know, this is you know, my first go at it. So rather than sweat it for years, I mean, I have been lazy about it for years, but I haven't sweated it for years, if that makes any sense. <laughs> you know, you've, you've done the most important thing with with any project you have 
completed begun. it. <laughs> you've, you've, you have begun doing it at one point. You have actually started the work. I, f I found this the, the daunting the, the daunting empty page in front of you when you write something, and it's it's often down to just getting started, and then the rest kind of happens automatically. Just getting your bum on the seat and and yeah begin right well, a lot, a lot doing of performance something. is like that isn't it as long as you get the start and the end right uh, yeah the, you, you can have some leeway in the middle i mean yeah chris you're a musician you, you yeah you must be able to relate to that and you know certainly um i i can i think actually starting is important um finishing is also important uh finishing on the right note is is a good one as well <laughs> so everybody gets that last chord in the song you know all, everybody all together uh so that that's yeah that's a nice one but this this is me trying to to stay on the bus and go a little bit further and push myself a little um i now have to figure out how best to distribute this uh, well this done first of all i like it i really like it i haven't seen yeah, the paper version yet but it's the, the it's very oh, there'll be one in the post it only arrived two days ago i haven't had a chance to post any out yet um oh. there will be uh there, there will be a small number of them uh for distribution beyond you know friends and what have you uh uh, I'm not quite sure how to set all that up yet. I don't know whether to, uh, not being a massive fan of social media, I, I might be minded to put together a website so people can get in touch. How do you and, promote something these days without social media and without a publisher or, or a promoter? Hmm. Uh, well, direct through, through our direct Discord, mail. Through our Discord <laughs> well, channels. Word of through, mouth, word of, a podcast. Yeah, Here, of we podcast. Here we go. Podcast. Here we go. Pod, go. Podcasts yeah. are good, yeah, I hear. Um, I do, yes, uh, the uh, uh yeah so so well there you go then um uh or you could touch. google how to promote your personal zine <laughs> you will find so many people who want to sell you the service of promotion <laughs> exactly mm. they cost way more than your magazine so uh, i go. just done a small print run of 40 of these right <laughs> just to get started so you know some of those will go out to friends like you guys uh so there'll be some in the post headed your way shortly and uh and some of them please, please people, sign mine please sign oh, yours oh yes please okay. yes yeah, please, please sign i mine. thought about that there's no oh, oh okay yeah there's a, there, i'll find somewhere to sign it that yeah it's 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 very it's a very black and white scene for those that are just listening That's i'll try okay. and find white a white I'll try try and find a white bit somewhere that yeah that I could write on that yeah, or, or or with white ink yeah I'm sure my daughter will have some like silver metallic pens or something like that that I can use. <laughs> I mean, there's 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 plenty of uh, white areas that you can sign on in here here right at the at the in, inner title page. This yeah, that's true. Could do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been a really interesting process. Um, towards the back, I've put a QR code in it uh and uh, and a few words and and because i've been thinking a lot about why i'm doing this um and it's not it, it's certainly not to be famous um uh so i i don't yeah it's, here's it's, the qr um, code for everyone to scan you'll get oh, mails yes, you can scan the qr code that that qr code is not dangerous it will just uh whatever device you scan <laughs> it with um it it will uh it it'll will just, just send suck. you all their bitcoins yeah it will yeah yeah um and uh and it'll also <laughs> pop up a, a little know. email that's addressed to me uh with a title okay. that says something like feedback on smithereens right because the, the zine is called smithereens um and the 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 when i sat down and thought well what do i want from this it, to, it it's very similar to what I want from what I get from podcasting and you know more broadly uh, photography as well it's just that uh, you know I love to to make friends I love to meet new people uh, and have interesting conversations about creative stuff and so uh, what I'd really like to do for anybody that sees this um, is to uh, for them to scan that QR code if they're minded to um, and to send me some genuine feedback on it. And you two are no exception. Um, I would appreciate some actual genuine feedback. Not, oh, I mean, if you say, if your feedback is genuinely, it's lovely, Adrian, well done. You've, you, you've cracked photography. Well, that's okay. I'll definitely accept that if that's the genuine <laughs> feedback. But I'm hoping for something that helps me to build. Um, so yeah, anybody that ends up with a copy of this scene, uh, yeah, be that, the, the physical paper copy or electronic copy when it gets distributed um please do get in touch because i'm really uh, I, I think teamwork is a good thing making new friends is a good thing and getting other people to give me feedback on what i'm doing it'll definitely be a good thing 
Well, I've just verified I just that the I just QR scanned code it works. and set you your yeah, <laughs> your QR code works. That's a, that's my feedback immediately. <laughs> my QR code works. That's good. I did test that, the QR. That's your code. first. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. I, I did, how many I typos have you QR. found? How many typos have you found since you published this? So far, I have found one error in the, uh, which is my error in in the printing. It's not in the typing. No, I'm sure there will be, um, and there's not that many words in it. So, but, so there can't be that many typos. But I'm sure there will be somewhere. Um, uh, but uh, I found one error, which is which I made in the layout. But I I won't you know, destroy the the joy of it for everybody. You know, it's by, it's uh, pointing pretty out it's pretty is. much it's pretty much uh, probably or very likely a thing that only you know and. It yes, irks you possibly. and everyone else is oh, like, yeah, so that was supposed to be that way. Yeah, that's possibly true. So, uh, but uh, Because I'm, I haven't found an error. I have not found an error at all. <laughs> well, the good thing about it being almost entirely images with very little text um, is that there are not that many <laughs> typos. <laughs> all right. Well, well done. It's, I like it. I like Thank it. You. Feels feels good. Really feels good looking at this. Can't wait for the yeah. It's nice version. to hold something in your hand, and it's it's done. Yeah, absolutely. and you've stayed on the bus. Yeah. I have, and I will travel further and see where it takes me as well. So uh, yeah, interesting times. All right. So with that, let us continue on to our picks of the week, and of course, Adrian, yours is the first one. Yeah, okay. Well, this is just a, a bit of a shout out, really. Um, the company I use to print this scene is called Mixam. Um, a lot of my photographic friends in the UK use this company. Uh, and uh, I found that um, uh, their their service was great. Um, uh, I, great in the sense that it was absolutely you know seamless, barely touched the sides. You know, it's um, the, 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 I had a question about layouts and things uh, before I started doing the layout, and uh, I emailed them in, and they emailed me back very promptly. Uh, the ordering process was was very slick. I even got a lovely email saying, "Oh, we're really sorry, but your 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 uh, delivery is going to be one day later than originally estimated." Mm. <laughs> Not bad. So, if you're in the UK, that would be your recommendation. Absolutely, not not sponsored, yes. not sponsored. No, no, not in it. No, just had a good, good, just had a good service from them. Very good, um, Jeremiah. Here is yours. Seeing through photographs. This is a course given by the Museum of Modern Art, and it's, and it's free. really, yeah, it's free, and it's uh, they do this, you know, reasonably often, and um, uh, it. I haven't done it, but I, but it, it. It just caught my eye as being something, since their collection is rather extraordinary. And um, I think anyone interested in photography, anybody who wants to deepen their understanding of photography through um, a, you know, a very, very well-respected um, museum, um, would be probably well entertained, educated, and appreciative of kind of how we experience uh, photographs and uh, awesome. what it means very cool i like this i like this a lot and uh i have um <laughs> i've recently come across uh, some someone's personal photography project which is not necessarily an artistic photography project um he calls it pi o'clock and what he does is every day at three fourteen p.m which is 3.14, as in pi, as in the number, he takes a photo and he has a daily alarm set and he has to take that photo within that minute, whatever he does <laughs> at that time. And then um, wherever he is, where whatever he's doing, and then at the bottom of the photo, he always keeps his, here in this case, an Apple Watch, just to show that uh, as a proof that that is the photo. And uh, he he wrote in that, in that, little, um, in that little tweet, th Twitter thread, that the, and then he's again not doing this in an artistic fashion but he uses those photos as anchors so later on when he goes back it brings the entire setting back the entire situation and so on um asked by Clever. someone what happens if he's uh he's in the bathroom at that time his answer was Every time, every day at three fourteen. <laughs> so whatever happens, wherever, take that picture. 
I really enjoyed this because, yeah, dude, even even doing even taking a photo every day based on an alarm that goes off on your wrist is taking a photo. It is staying on the bus. It's it it keeps you it is. going forward yeah. in some way, and even if it's if it's a purely mechanical thing, it keeps you do it. So it's but at it's least a little bit of a practice, as Jeremiah says. Yes. It's that, that's the practice of photography. Yeah, everybody yes. has their own way of doing it. And I think after you've taken like three, four, five hundred of these, there is something that is going to occur to you. You're going to learn something. Yeah. About yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So stick with it. That If I look at this whole area of podcasting, when I started to, to do that, I don't know, 16 years ago, um, that was pretty much the first time in my life that I did something every single week and kept kept doing it and kept it and now look at, at it you and now look at me world. now i'm i don't know i don't know <laughs> anyway that was it for this week thank you so much for being uh here for being subscribed let everyone else know where to find us and uh we'll be back in a week i guess until then everyone take care and bye bye You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 